Okay, we're going to do some more of the factoring, just trying to get much better at it. Now, looking at this problem, do you notice, first of all, that this is not in the right order? This is not in descending order, and more even than that, it's not in that perfect um, form. Remember that perfect that form that we talked about was if we had x squared plus bx plus c? So our squared term really should come first, and in this case it's not. You know what? We can change that around pretty easily. As long as we keep our signs uh, correct, this 13 is a positive number, so we have to keep it positive. This 14m is a positive, so we keep it positive. As long as we keep our signs, remember, we can move things around because um, addition is commutative and associative, so you can do it in any order you want to. Now, this is in the proper order. There is no GCF. We have three terms, which means we factor by trial and error. So I'm, let's see, m times m would give us m squared. That's the easy part. This last sign says same or different. In this case, it will be the same because it's positive, and this sign will tell us what they are. So that says we're both, though both of these will be positive. Now, let's think of what multiplies together to give us a 13, and somehow it will combine to add or subtract to give us a 14. Well, with 13, your choices are extremely limited. All we have is 1 times 13. And now, if that's true, when we do our inner and outer terms, they should combine to give us a 14. So here we have 1 times m is m, and m times 13 is 13m. And when you combine those, you do get a positive 14m. So this is our factorization. Now for the next one, we have 2z squared plus 20z plus 32. And you may be very tempted just to start throwing down your parentheses and getting to work. But you have to remember your first rule of factoring. The first rule of factoring is always to pull out the GCF, and it will come up from time to time. So you have to do that every time. Ask yourself. In this case, we have a 2 that's common for each of these terms. So we have to factor out the GCF first. 2 times z squared would give us 2z squared. 2 times a positive 10z would give us 20z. And 2 times 16 would give us a 32. Now, once we have factored out the GCF, you can't say, well, that's it, I'm done. You have to try to see if you can factor it a little bit more. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. In this case, we can. So let's just ignore, I'm just going to highlight that so we can kind of ignore that for just a second. Um, and let's look at z squared plus 10z plus 16. And let's just see what we have here. Um, we don't have any more GCF to pull out, which is good. Um, we have three terms which means we're going to factor by trial and error method. So if this will factor down, we're going to try it here. Well, first part of the binomials is the easy part. z times z would give us z squared. And remember, your last term tells you whether the signs are the same or different. Positive means they're the same. Negative means they're different. So this tells us that they're the same and they're both positive. So now we have to think of factors of 16 that will somehow combine to give us a 10. Well, let's see, 16 would be 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4, ah, how about 2 and 8? 2 times 8 would give us 16, and 2z plus 8z would give us 10z. Now we cannot forget about the 2 that we had on the outside. We have to continue bringing that down because that is a factor. 